We are not in Trier today. We are in Peace Pot. Fine, just a little bit of cold. Most of us got a cold at the moment. We are quite busy with in-person tours, so October seems to be crazy. Even my old colleagues told me they never had an October like this. So today is my day off and I'm taking everybody to Peaceport, which you see on the other side. So it's really a pretty place, a nice place for a walk. And now it's really nice. This morning we had about five degrees, lots of fog. So I came down the road here on the other side, couldn't see a thing, couldn't even see cars in front of me, couldn't see where the street was. So really a bit frightening. Welcome. We are on our Mosel River today, not in Trier. We are looking at Peaceport today. Yeah, here as well. I mean, we had a heat wave for several months. We had a little bit of rain lately, and now we got cold nights, fog in the morning. And now I'm in my t-shirt and it's about 20 degrees and I regret that I didn't take my sunglasses. <laughs> so it's really, it's strange. And they're more or less finishing with our harvest here for the grapes and it's usually the start end of October. And here you can see what a small boat can do. We don't have any wind at all at the moment. It was just a small boat that passed us. Oh, thanks for following. Yeah, if you follow me, you get to see my new tours. Welcome, we still got about two minutes. You're looking at one of the prettiest views in our Mosel Valley, especially pretty during October, when everything starts to change color. So it's really a nice place to be. And I will be testing a few more tours, a few new locations. So follow me if you want to know where we go. Yeah, see, it's really a small village and steep slopes. We will start walking in half a minute. But I thought this place is nice to start. It's a nice view. It's pretty here. And sometimes you just need a little bit of relaxing nature and pretty. So welcome. And I hear the church bells, so it's time for me to start. So let me say hi in five seconds. Hang on. Hi guys, I'm Juliane. I'm your guide here for Trier, the Mosel region, Luxembourg. And today we are not in Trier, we are in Peaceport. Peaceport is a small village on the Mosel towards uh, Koblenz. So about 40 kilometers, 45 minutes drive from Trier. It's one of the prettiest places here on our river. I did test the signal. I know I will have a few patches where the signal behaves strange. I checked 
the signal, so I checked the video. The video was okay, but my signal told me it's only two. We will go over the bridge. There are a few patches on the bridge where you might have to refresh. And if you refresh, you might have to unmute me later. But the view is so nice, so I decided we are going to risk it here. And I hope my signal behaves. Yeah, you can chat with me, you can take postcards. And please post the nice ones on Facebook, on your social media. As always, it's free to join, but we guides don't get paid. So if you could leave a tip, it would be great. And please follow me to get to know where we'll be going in the future. But now let's start. And it's really a relaxing tour. I'm not doing the whole history of the village. I just decided um, I have to go to Neumagen this morning. So I had decided, well, let's do our Mosel walk here in Peaceport because it's just nice. And as you can see, we got vineyards directly next to the village here. And some of them are actually flat. Not typical for the Mosel. Most of it, it's really the steep slopes. So it's more like this. Yeah, Peaceport, a tiny village, about 2,000 people are living here. And it consists here of Old Peaceport on the other side and part called Oberemmel on this side. So we will start on this side, we will cross the bridge and we will walk as well on the other side. But the view on the famous mountains here on our gold tröpfchen is best from here, from this side. That's why I decided we have to start on this side. Yeah, and this is one of the typical uh, footpaths you can take just to go for a nice walk. And everything is green again, which is nice. We had some rain during the last few weeks. But during summer, everything was really dry. So, hang on. Now I can't read my chat. Should really have bought sunglasses. We got some pretty yellow flowers here. I've got no idea what kind of flowers, but they look pretty. So I hope you don't hear a splash quite soon. I mean, it's warm, but I don't want to take a bath in here, that's why I'm moving extremely slowly. Oh, and you can see we are still using our river for transport. So it's our Mosel. It's a transport here. And I guess they might end up on the Rhine. I wanted to show you the flowers down here. Because they're really pretty. Yeah, you can see the vineyards start changing color. Uh, not really, I'm not, uh, that's Koblenz where the Mosel meets the Rhine. That's about, I would say, at least 
and that's our by train from here so I so still have to go quite a long way so we are here on our Mosel which is famous for the Riesling and I just have to keep an eye out here because the grass is still slippery and you don't want to see the grass you want me to take you over to Old Peaceport and enjoy the view here. Yeah, and on the other side, you see the famous uh, Peace Porter Gold Tröpfchen. I'm zooming in a bit. So I hope you can see the name. And this is uh, the name of the famous uh, vineyard here. Yeah, they had vineyards here since Roman times. They did f find evidence that the Romans actually made wine here during the second to fourth century. So it's really, I would say, yeah, it's the oldest wine region in Germany. The Romans didn't plant Riesling. Riesling was developed much later, 15th century. The Romans had a mixture of wild grapes, different ones. The first wine was probably not so nice, but today it's really famous and it's mainly Riesling. And for a long time here, Goldtröpfchen was the synonym for Riesling, because they only had Riesling in here. So if people said Riesling, they thought Goldtröpfchen, and if somebody said Goldtröpfchen, it was clear it must have been Riesling. And you see the trees are already changing color. Usually they start harvesting Riesling mid to end October. This year a lot uh, of the wineries already have finished the Riesling harvest. A colleague of mine who did uh, one of the guiding classes together with me, she got a tiny uh, winery but no signal in the cellar so and she finished, they finished harvesting yesterday. I guess it's climate change. So perhaps in 20 years this will be something like red wine and places like Canada will have taken over all our Riesling. I know in Canada they are doing great Riesling already by now. And just giving you the fantastic view. So welcome guys. We are in Peaceport here on our Mosel. Ooh, good question. I don't know. I have to check how many wineries they've got. I would say at least 10 probably more. It's still most uh, of the people who work here in the village work in the vineyards. A few restaurants, a few shops. So it's tourism and wineries here. We don't have much industry here. Yep, it does flood. So I guess in winter I wouldn't be able to do this tour here. We often uh, have floods here and the houses on the other side 
also often get at least water in their basements. And this morning in Neumagen, I showed some of the flood markings. And I mean, they were two meters at least high. So we had our river, we had camping space and we had a parking lot. We were on the road and the flood markings on the house were in above two meters at least. So yeah, it sometimes floods. People are used to it here. Um, it's, I would say it's okay at the moment. It's not, it's not too high. I mean, we are lucky that we got some rain a few days and a few weeks ago. I would say that's actually normal, normal for this time of the year. So not, not too high. I mean, the ships are still running, so it's not too high. Yeah, it can happen in winter that you can't go on a Mosul cruise because we've got too much water. And then you wouldn't be able to walk here. Yeah, as I said before, my signal started to behave funny around here. I know I, it will be bouncing back on top of the bridge. It will stay with me, I guess, until the bridge. But you may have to refresh. But I wanted to show you this great view, so I decided it's worth it. I just wanted to warn you Oh, and here we got the typical slates. The region is famous for the slates. We use it for building material. And it's found in the vineyards and it gives the specific taste to the wines. So. Yeah, my signal is still holding. Yeah, and the bridge was built after the Second World War because all Mosul bridges except our Roman bridge in Trier were destroyed during the Second World War. Our Mosul bridge, the old one from the second century, it's the only one that survived. They also wanted to destroy it, but it didn't work out. And here you can see St. Michael's Church a little bit of the reflections in the water. And they're doing some construction work on the other side. And just looking down to the grass. Yeah, it was cold this morning, so the grass is still wet. And wet grass means slippery, and I don't want to end up down here. Across is Peace Port, Alt Peace Port. On this side, also Peace Port, Oberemme. So Peace Port is on both sides of the river. It's a tiny village, 2,300 people living here. The village was mentioned the first time at the end of the 8th century, but we found evidence that people lived here earlier and that the Romans cultivated wine here much earlier. They found uh, evidence from the 2nd to 4th century for the Romans. 
and to see people are enjoying the nice day. And you see on this side, the houses are on top of the hill. So it's more to avoid flooding. You can get your garden underwater, but you want to avoid it in your house. Uh, we are in Rhineland Palatinate in Germany. And here somebody got a private jetty. They locked it off so you can't go on it. But we can at least come up to this point. And you see, it was a tiny boat. It makes quite some waves. Holding you up, guys, again. Yeah, and if you come here, you can walk through the vineyards on the other side. It's a nice hiking path. If people stop uh, with their cruise ship in Peaceport or Windrich, we usually take the road down here because it's just a pretty view. And everybody takes tons of pictures. So if you book Viking, you will pass through here. They usually stop in Windrich and the bus takes you to Trier. And it goes via Peaceport. So we will now go over the bridge. I definitely try this side. I want to show you the view from the other side, but when I'm on top of the bridge. My signal stopped when I came down the bridge, the other side. Oh yeah, and some red wine on this side. And here you see it's really pretty gardens with some red grapes. It's a typical decoration you have in gardens here or around your houses. So the vineyards, the vines are really important for this region. And it's I would say, together with our river, the main tourist attraction. And I mean, even the coat of arms of Peaceport has the grapes on it. Yet my signal is still holding. I'm zooming in. That's how you write Peace Port. And there is a nice story about how Goldtröpfchen got its name. Yeah, apparently an emperor long, long ago wanted to bath in wine, so they used 100 bottles of wine from this vineyard, he took a bath and later his butler, his valet, thought, well, actually it's a waste to throw the wine away. So he rebottled everything, 
but he didn't end up with 100 bottles, but 101. And now you can guess why it got the name Goldtröpfchen, meaning golden drop. So, Emperor was in the bath with 100 bottles. Later we had 101 bottles. But today the taste is really nice. And it's famous internationally as well. So you might even get it uh, in your country. So. so, and now let's go over. Let's go to Altpeace Port. And here you are not allowed to use a motorbike, but you can drive with your tractor because sometimes you need to go to your vineyard, but no cars. Yeah. Oh, so you know it. Yes, I sell quite a lot to the US. So now you know how it looks like here. It's not only a really lovely wine, it's also a really lovely village. So Ragnar is behaving, that's nice. And they use small tractors like this. Yeah, you have to try it. And I mean, really, it's really famous here. Oops, sorry guys, signal is going. I hope you can still hear me. Everybody back? Oh, great, because my signal told me one bar. So I want to show you the view from the other side. But I have to check for traffic first. You see the cars are quite fast here. And you don't want a flat guide. Oh great, that your signal is still here. Because this view is also great. So you see we got really the steep slopes here. Not so easy if you have to harvest it. A lot of them harvest by hand. That's why it's also a little bit more expensive. But if you harvest by hand, it has an advantage you can only harvest those grapes which are ideal. So if some are faulty, you just uh, drop them. Or if they are not ripe yet, you don't harvest them. So let me try to hold you over here. Because we get 
a really lovely reflection of St. Michael's Church here. This building also 18th century, I believe. And if your course stops in Peace Port, it may be stopping here, where we are looking at. So if your cruise ship stops in Peaceport, um, the bridges were damaged. The village not so much. I mean, the village had no importance, but the bridges were damaged. And most of them actually were damaged by the German army because they didn't want um, the Americans to get our bridges at the end of the war. So the German army destroyed most of the bridges. I mean, the village here has had no importance. If you don't have industry, it was just the bridges that were interesting. Yeah, and you see small tiny chapels in the vineyard and small houses they were used um, for protection. If you had bad weather, you could spend some time in here. And it's really a Catholic area, so we always had small chapels everywhere in the vineyards. And I'm glad that the weather worked out. This morning I thought, well, might be quite a grey day. Often our fog really clears around uh, 11 or noon. But this morning it was so bad, I thought, well, we might be unlucky. Yeah, I mean, it's a weekday and not a holiday. So it's, yeah, it's our main tourist season, at least in Trier. We got our cruise ships, but it depends um, on the times at the locks. Sometimes they have to wait. And it was quite cold, so a lot of people didn't take the day off. I mean, it's Fridays. Yeah, yeah, it's Friday. So people are working at the moment. And we got the big advantage. We get some reflections if there's not enough, uh, if there's not too much traffic here. So welcome guys, we are looking at Peaceport today, famous for Goldtröpfchen Riesling. So it's not only a walk along our river, it's also a walk over our river here. Yeah, and it's really one of the prettiest view, views of the valley here. So turning you around. into the sun a little bit but I want to give you an overview over the whole area here 
you see we've got a muzzle band here and on this side it's more flat that's why I decided it's prettier to walk on the other side first to see everything because here it gets flat flatter yeah I love the sky today it's really pretty So trying to turn. And you see it's a small old village here. So if you come to our Mosul, come, I would say, mid-September to mid-end October. Because then you will have all the pretty uh, things here. Um, hang on. Wasp coming. Yep. You can uh, stay here. They got over 200 beds in the village. You can get a nice apartment. Sometimes the wineries have one or two apartments where you can stay for self-catering. We got a few hotels. In front of us is one. So often people come with their cruise ship. They do day tours from the ship. Or you can just spend the day in the village we got public transport, we got buses, but you need to check them first. Might be a nice idea to get a taxi or rent a car. I mean, if you want uh, to do wine tasting, using the bus or a taxi is better. And it's still quiet because yeah it's Friday afternoon and people are working so so let's go down here but down here I would say just need to check for traffic oh he needs oil Yeah, here you can stay or get something to eat, to drink. And you see we got so small streets again, narrow streets. Yeah, the main business here is really tourism and wineries. Okay. 
Okay. I just wanted to show you a few of the roses here. So you even get some nice flowers. And they often plant roses in the vineyards because roses tend to get the same illnesses as our vines so, so but the rose gets them earlier meaning if your rose gets sick you still have time to act and protect um, your grapes your vine so it's not to make it pretty it's just um, yeah to protect your vineyard and you see Oh, and on the other side, Kelta Station means that's where they produce wine. Oh, and thanks for following, guys. Yeah, if you follow me, you will see my new tours. I will do more, especially in November again. I added a few for October as well. We will do a new one in Trier. I will do some tests um, probably in Luxembourg, hopefully next week. So you might get a new Luxembourg tour end of October, beginning of November. We will go back to Lichtenberg Castle next week. What else did I schedule? Yeah, our Imperial bus, which I had uh, to cancel last minute because I made the mistake to eat something on our street food festival and got extremely sick. And it was just French fries. So French fr fries with pulled pork, nothing special. Yeah, it's still Corona, COVID test center. We are the only country that still has uh, COVID. Everybody else um, realized we must live with it. Oh, and here we got a map so I can show you where we are. I always like maps. I hope you can see something here. So we are, if you look to the river, a little bit, you see the bridge in the middle, the red dot. That's where we are at the moment. And Trier would be down about yeah we would be probably yeah where the heart is a little bit further just to give you an overview and here you see we got the flat side on our right and the steep slopes on the left hand side which is really pretty yeah, it's quarter to five, so we will soon get uh, night in two hours. But the sun here will disappear quite soon. Yeah, and here you can just go for a lovely walk. Enjoy the scenery. Go for yeah, some nice wine. Yeah, and if you liked the tour, please follow me. Please come to my other tours. As I said before, it's free to join, but we guides don't get paid. So the only way 
we can continue if you leave us some tips. And check out my colleagues. Hago has really great tours, really lovely colleagues. So just travel around the world. And now it's a head, I said 45 minutes. But let's stop here. It's nice. So high with uh, the sun on our river. Oh, and thanks for following, guys. So you get to know when I do new tours, where I will be doing new tours. There will be really more in November. Thanks a lot. But at the moment, it's the busiest October my colleagues could ever remember for in-person tours. So at the moment, we are doing lots and lots of museum tours as well. Sunday, I'm doing two big groups for museums. The first one is two museums, back to back. And the second group is all three museums, back to back. So I will be in the museum five times. Which is quite fun, but uh, sometimes, yeah. Your voice doesn't like it. So thanks for coming. I hope I see you next week or the week after. So thanks. Bye, guys. <laughs>